Jessica Risker. I'm a musician based here in Chicago, Illinois. I'm also a licensed clinical professional counselor. And Music Therapy is a show where I use my experience as a licensed counselor to talk about issues facing musicians and creative people uh, during these weird times. That can include informational videos about uh, mental health subjects and also interviews with people, which is something that I'm going to do today. I'm going to be interviewing Joseph Chavison. Um, and he'll be on in just a second. Let me give a couple announcements and, and share a little bit of information before he comes on. Um, the idea behind doing interviews is for musicians to share their stories, to uh, kind of understand what other people are going through, how their music looks, how their music career may have been impacted, but also we kind of follow the conversation wherever it leads. So today one of the things I want to talk to Joseph about is being a parent and a musician. It's something that for many years I wondered about, and now that I am a parent, I have questions about how other musicians make it work. So we'll be talking about a, a range of stuff, I think. Um, after uh, we have our interview, please stick around. I'm gonna play a, a new song um, uh, to close out the, the show today. And um, Joseph, why don't you go ahead and connect? And while you're doing that, I'll talk about my upcoming guest. Tomorrow I have a really good friend, Shelby Turner, is also an amazing musician. Shelby Turner, you may know him as Richard Album, uh, or Schlitz Sheboygan, it is Schlitz's birthday tomorrow, so that's why we're doing it tomorrow. So Richard Album, Shelby Turner is going to be on tomorrow, and then on Monday, Sasha Mullen. I've also got some really great guests coming up for next weekend. I'm still uh, firming down the details, but I'll be letting you guys know about those soon. Okay, so let's see, let's get Joseph on here. Okay, we're waiting, we're connect. Make sure this works. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, I'm okay. <laughs> it's nice to see you outside, it must be a nice day. Yeah, it's gorgeous here. It's actually the first day off that I have had in two months. So I went up to the country with my friend in a socially responsible way uh -huh. and built a bonfire on a small island and picked some fiddleheads and went swimming. You've done all that today? Yeah. That's, that's great. Where, so where are you exactly? Um, I'm in a town that's maybe 45 minutes north of Toronto called Caledon, which is where I grew up. And um, yeah, whenever I have some time, I usually come up here because it's gorgeous. It's like lots of rolling, lots of rolling hills and farmland and beautiful rivers and stuff like that. It's quite nice. That sounds great. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Is everything good in that respect? Yeah, yeah, how yeah, about for you? Good. Yeah, very good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm hanging in there today. It's also really pretty here today, so that helps a lot. Wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. Um, so, okay, so, you know, for anybody who just joined, we're talking, we're kind of going to get a sense of what your life is looking like during quarantine um, and, and some other stuff as well, but I'm starting off uh, the interviews with musicians by asking, you know, what... Before there was like a lockdown and, and, and the world kind of changed, did you have like a day-to-day, a, -day, a routine? Like what did your life look like? Yeah, I did. It was like, it was quite wonderful actually. Like every day I'd get up and have breakfast with uh, my wife and my kid and I'd drive uh, Louis to um, daycare. And then uh, I would have basically from like 8.30 until 4.30 every single day to... Here, my friend Phil's here too. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Thanks How are you? you? Good, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Calvin Village. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, just from 8.30 till 4.30 every day I'd work. Like, I'd work writing music for ads and movies and TV shows and composing my own songs. And I had this really wonderful routine where I could just yeah do what i needed to do all day and exercise in the middle of the day for like a lunch break and uh -huh. it was perfect like i had like i think work time and family time carved out in a really healthy way yeah and then yeah and then the whole COVID thing happened and it just got obliterated like completely so it went from that to my wife and i my wife reports on COVID for the toronto star which is canada's biggest newspaper uh -huh. and so like we both were just so slammed with work, but then also having to navigate, you know, full-time childcare. And I think, I mean, yeah, it rocked us completely. So 
you said your wife works at the paper? Yeah, she does. And have you, has your work increased or decreased since all of this started? Are you, do you, no. you know, are you working with advertising agencies? How do you get your, your work? So I, I mean, two ways. I work for a company uh, and like, it's sort of like an um, ad production house. Mm -hmm. And, but we do lots of different stuff like music for video games and yeah. television shows and all sorts of cartoons and like it hasn't slowed down at all like if anything between that and then my own work like my own original music and then also finishing like a feature-length film like it's only gotten more so <laughs> i got so fucking dinked i can't even tell you just like between work and childcare, it's been i mean it's kind of been the busiest it's ever been for me for music and there's the childcare factor so it's been a, it's been a weird time i mean how, how have you been have you been okay yeah, I have. I mean, um, usually I go to an office to do to see clients. My yeah. I have a private practice, so now that's just done at home. And I don't prefer, I don't prefer telehealth. It's you get more information in person, but yeah. um, it's nice to be able to step out and see. My I told you my my son is twenty months old, and he's not quite old enough yet to sort of realize that when he can't see me, I'm still here in the the, the apartment, so yeah. he doesn't come bug me. Um, but you said your son is two? Yeah, he turned two at the end of February. And so, okay, and so your wife, what does her work like now? Is she also working from home? Yeah, so she's working from home as well, but I would say that she's way busier than normal because she's reporting on COVID. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and obviously right now her work is more important than mine, I think from like a societal perspective like she's uh -huh. doing good work and like you know she's quite good at her job she's an amazing science and technology reporter and she's able to kind of sift through all of these really big scientific documents and studies mm -hmm. and like kind of present that information to the public in a way that's understandable so I think we both recognized that I was going to have to do the majority of the child care because uh -huh my work's just more flexible. Like I can work at night. It's less deadline focused. Yeah. But I think the practical application of that is that like, I mean, both of us are getting rocked. Like don't get me wrong, but from a mental health standpoint, like I'm, I'm usually really even keeled mm -hmm. and I've been hitting some lows in the last three weeks that have just been, yeah, like kind of scary, you know, where I could just, I'll wake up and I'll feel like I don't, like I need another eight hours before I even feel normal. So, and then knowing that I'm staring down like a solid one and a half days straight of childcare, like solo is, yeah, it's just a weird, bad time. <laughs> yeah. So what is that? How is that playing out for you for like a normal day when you're trying to balance both work and doing the bulk of the childcare? I mean, you know, not well, it's okay. <laughs> Like in that I'm getting it done, but I think the sacrifice for getting it done is just that I think my mental health is just like bad. It's bad. Like I'm irritable and I'm frustrated and like things that before I would never think to get like kind of snippy with Louie, my son, or with mm -hmm. Kate. Like I notice myself like my there's just a level of like a baseline level of frustration that's just due to extreme fatigue that is there. And um, yeah, I think that's, so that's sort of how it's playing out. It's like, I'm able to finish everything and do everything because I have to, but I don't think like I am doing particularly well, if that makes yeah. sense. It, that totally makes sense. Um, so, I mean, I imagine he requires a lot of attention. It's probably not <laughs> possible to really get him to play by himself for very long. No, and like he's a particularly bippy, bippy boppy kid. Like he doesn't sit down for long stretches of time, and like he just he's just really active, you know. Like I know I was the same way when I was younger, and it's it's one of those things where like you know you hear about kids who can sit down and play for forty five minutes with like drawing or whatever. Yeah. He's just not that. So there's like constant activity and like having to go to the park for two hour stretches because that something that he really loves, but like, you're just always moving and your mental bandwidth is like at a hundred percent.
because you'd have to focus on him. So there's really no time to yourself at all. Right, right. So then are you taking care of him until your wife is done with her day and then you switch and then you go to work? Sometimes is that. And then there's other times where it's like, you know, we'll do half days. So I'll do, uh, she'll do the morning and then I'll take over at 2.30 and do the back half of the day. Yeah. But usually like, so I'm doing about 75% of it. So it's like, I'll do a day and a half on and then she does a half day. And then it goes like that. Just because her work is more demanding. Yeah, yeah. And does he nap? He naps. He's a good napper. Although last night, like in this, it was a total anomaly, but he woke up at 4 a.m. just for the day. Oh, no. <laughs> so like today was supposed to be my first day off in two months. And yeah. like Kate got up with him at 4 a.m., thank God. But then I had to just take over from, you know, like 7.30 until 11.30. So I still had to do childcare today, which is fine. Like, it's fine. It just yeah. is, you know, when you're counting on that one day, it's a bit of a letdown. Yeah, for sure. It's a lot. Do it's you, a lot. Okay, I mean, do you, do you talk to, do you have any parent friends? Do you talk to other people who may be experiencing yeah. something? I think everyone's in the same boat, right? Like you can commiserate and everyone's just kind of like lamenting the loss of childcare and their freedom and their sanity. And like, I think it's tough because some of our friends are in much worse positions financially than us, you know, we're like, we're lucky enough to have kept our jobs and that's going well. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of friends like, yeah, they're just like in tougher spots. So like there's different people you can lament about with like, or different things. You have to choose, be selective with who you can talk to about certain things. But I think in general, like, talking with friends has been really helpful and, and yeah just to know that you're in the same boat you know like it, there's, there's camarad camaraderie there but yeah. also I think all of us are just truly exhausted really like it's just we're just so tired I don't know how you're feeling but if you feel the same way but or if you're like do you have somebody who you can split your child care with my husband uh is a musician but he works at like second city and mm -hmm. Uh, improv theaters and they're not open so yeah he actually does a lot anyway because he he leaves for work at like 7 p.m at night usually so he he pulls long days oh that's helpful but so it works out that we don't need child care but yeah um, so when i'm in here seeing people he's out with them but he spends a lot of time with them right but it's not as strange as i think some people and yeah and there's definitely shared experience i have several parents who are saying the exact same thing that they are they're trying to work they're trying to balance it's cutting into their work and then they got to finish it and they're just exhausted and then the piece that you were saying too is that they find themselves irritable with their kids or kid in a way that they you know feel really bad about but they're tired and yeah that, that's yeah. my husband right there i do a lot he does um and i think it's one of those uh, things where it's like i i also didn't realize how much i leaned on my friends for like my mental well-being you know just to be able to like go play shows and hang out and like hug them and do fun things have beers whatever it might be like we always had such a pretty like a very rich social life and we loved having people over mm -hmm. and then it's like no child care coupled with no friends and like this weird feeling of isolation and i think you start to go at least i am going like somewhat loopy well yeah i mean let's let me ask you about that i can you can you describe you know what you're you said the past three weeks have been especially hard can you describe what you're feeling i mean kind of what i was saying before just that like i think that in normal times like i have a big well of patience and like um patience to draw from right mm -hmm. like you i have time during the day to kind of recharge and be creative and like um do the things that i love and it's, it's like selfish time where i'm by myself and or even playing with friends, which is amazing and like really stimulating. And now the feeling is kind of, it's more of, um, like I don't have anything to draw on when I get in, yeah. like when I'm feeling low or ir like, like something's frustrating. Like I go to, I go to those places of like needing to like, um, how do I say it? Like feel like I have, like reserves that I can draw yeah. on and they're just mm -hmm. gone. So 
I just, there's this weird hopeless feeling or a feeling of just total like irritability that it's not me. But yeah, that's sort of what it's like. It's like just extreme fatigue, extreme fatigue. That's it. <laughs> that's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, I'm sure that's a big piece of what's underlying all that. Um, do you, have you ever been through anything like this before, this type of feeling before in your life? No, no, I don't think so. You know, like every, every, everything in my life that's been kind of bad or like mental healthy before was always because like, you know, something that I was doing where it was like, you know, I'm feeling pretty anxious, but I'm also doing a ton of drugs. Maybe I should stop doing that. And I did, uh -huh. and it worked. Or like, you know, going to a therapist and like talking through things really helps. But like, this is one of those things where it's like, it's not a mystery why it's happening. It's just, yeah. like, it's like a yeah. problem strictly of like logistics where it's like I'm doing far too much we both are like both my wife and I and yeah. like that's it you know like it just has to be this way until it we can get a break legally but for the time being it's just what it is you know one thing I you know while we're on the the subject of you know having a kid and parenting one thing that I'm personally very curious about, but I have been for a long time because wanting to do music, but also always wanting to be a mom. And now that mm -hmm. I am, I was always really concerned about how those would fit together. And so yeah. kind of going back to normal times, I mean, right now, you know, it's one thing, but how do you, how do you make that work when you, you know, you were on tour, I saw you with Jessica Pratt earlier or last mm -hmm. year. Um, how do you, how does that look for you? How has that felt? How long were you gone? You know, I think that, so that Jessica Pratt tour was sort of the second longest tour I did last year. Um, and that felt reasonable. Like it was maybe just under two weeks. But then okay. shortly after I went to Europe for, um, actually with Phil, who you just saw, I went to Europe for um, maybe three weeks. Uh -huh. And that was, I think my wife and I both agreed that was too much. Like, I think it put her in a position where she was just sort of like feeling totally overwhelmed yeah. but in general like I, I think I'm trying to tour less which I'm actually into like I don't want to be on the road all that much mm -hmm. and it's allowing me to focus on like making albums and writing and scoring work so mm -hmm. like stuff that I can do from that's like more of a nine to five or evenings type thing mm -hmm. and I've really been enjoying that balance like I feel like touring is amazing but I've done a lot of it and I'm at a point where I'm glad to just stay at home for a bit, you know, or just do shorter runs like week and a half or something like that. How was it for you to be away? How was it for you to be away from your family and your, your little guy? I mean, he must've been pretty young at the time. He was fine. If I'm being honest, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I love him. I miss, I love him. I missed him, but like a week and a half to be on tour and like have fun and play shows. I, I was fine. I was so fine. And when I got <laughs> home, like, it was so great to see him and, like, hang out and yeah. be there. But, like, there was no part of me that was like, oh, I can't wait to get home. I was like, no, this is great. I am on the <laughs> break in a very major way. I think that's a I've, difference that would be my husband and I have talked about. I think he would be fine with it. I think it would be harder for me to be away for a period of days. But... Yeah. And, I mean, like, the maternal bond that happens to, like, I don't know if you stayed home with uh, – your kid for that first year and like by yourself but I know my wife did and like just the amount of time that you spend and like I think I'm realizing this with how much time I'm spending with him now is like mm -hmm. if I don't see him for a couple of days I really miss him in a way that I didn't before you know mm -hmm. and I think that to have that whole first year together would make time apart feel a lot um tougher yeah yeah so do you see um, you know, if you're going to maybe not tour as much, but still work on your own music, do you see that having an impact on, you know, maybe the reach of an album that you might put out? Yeah, for sure. Like, I think that, I don't know how you found it, but like, you know, I've never been a big tourer with my own stuff. And for sure, like if I was on the road all the time, I'm sure I'd sell more albums and it would have a broader reach. But to be perfectly honest, like, I probably also lose way more money. Like, touring does not pay very well. If anything, it costs money. So for me, like, I find that, like, just grinding away and making albums is so enjoyable for me. 
and then also like with the internet and everything like people hear it you know like your reach can be you can have a reach in different ways and i'm really enjoying that like not feeling the pressure of like oh man i've got to be on the road for four months this year five months i'm just like yeah like it doesn't even enter into my mind and there's a real peace in not having that pressure on me and i know i have friends who love being on the road mm -hmm. and that's wicked but i don't i don't think i'm one of those people like i like i like it sometimes but a lot of the time i would rather just be with you know, making music at home. Yeah. Do you find like how, what about you? Like, do you, do you feel that like not being able to go on the road a ton is kind of detrimental? I guess that's something I, you know, it seems like it's a necessary part of it. And certainly I want to work as hard as I can at it, but it's, it's not something that I had done a ton of before. Mm -hmm. And most, I had mostly in, enjoyed it quite a bit, but I was also with friends and we just had a blast and I didn't have a kid. Um, yeah, but now I think it would be it would feel different, and it would be. I'm still open to it for sure, but yeah, I guess that's something, and that's part of the reason I'm asking you these questions. It's just you know, how do people? How does it look for people? How do they make it work? And what do you think about? I mean, it's also different in Canada, right? Because like this last couple of tours I did, I applied for funding for those tours from the government and got it. So like for the first time ever, I didn't lose money, which was fucking amazing. Like yeah. That was great. And like that to me is actually more sustainable, but um, I don't know. Like it's, a, it's, a, it's a certain lifestyle, right? And I think some people really love it. And I think as I've grown older, I see what it looks like to tour all the time and have a family. And I've never seen it be a situation that's like something that appeals to me anyway. It's like seeing other people try to make that work. Yeah, like there's always some kind of sacrifice you have to make. And I think the sacrifices that you have to make, like the, the family sacrifices that you have to make and also the burden that you have to put on your partner to kind of like pick up the slack yeah, right. is huge. And like, you know, Kate works more than I do. Like she, her job's nuts. So to have to be like, okay, see you later. I'm going on the road for like three months of the year. I just don't think right now it's yeah. it's really like – it wouldn't be good for my marriage and it wouldn't be good for me or the kids. Like it just is not what I'm interested in. Have you ever considered taking him or them with you? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because driving 45 minutes without him losing his mind because he's <laughs> so fidgety. Like the idea of like, staring down like a, like a 12 hour drive or something with a <laughs> two year old, like, yeah. hell no like i would <laughs> go crazy and then you're gonna arrive at the show just like sh more shredded than you normally are <laughs> like people do it but i think it's people who also recognize that like they have to tour and maybe they're making enough money touring that it's like hell yeah like i'm gonna make a hundred grand this year on the road and like yeah. i have to do this for my family and i get that yeah. but for me i think it's more been about building a life where i don't have to do that so the idea of like bringing my family on the road is maybe the least appealing thing I can think of. <laughs> Have you seen the documentary, The Other F Word? No, it's that. It's about uh, punk rock, punk rock stars who become dads. So the other F word being fatherhood. <laughs> and is then, it good? Yeah, it's really good. And it just shows some of the decisions they make and how that looks to have a family and go on the road. And yeah, and I think that's the thing. It's like some people have to make that decision and have to do it. Like that's how they make their living, and like I really respect that. But for me, I think the last bunch of years has been about building a life that does not involve having to make that decision. I mean, it sounds like you've really um, you've really created a, a career for yourself that has sort of different arms, where you're, you know working with different types of media, working with other artists, and then including doing your own artwork. But it's, it's, you've got different things going on. There's not all one basket. Yeah, and I think what's, a bit, what's been interesting is that as soon as I started doing my own music, it's what has led to all of the other stuff. Like, it wasn't really until I started doing that that people started reaching out and saying like, hey, I really like what you're doing. Can you score this movie or this animated series? Oh. Or do you want to come work for us? We really love what you're doing. Like, there was a certain, like, you know, I was teaching music lessons for 17 years, like private sax and flute and clarinet yeah. lessons. And at a certain point, I um, took a loan out against our house. 
-hmm. And I was like, I got to build a studio that's better. And I got to quit teaching. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing this forever. And I don't want to be. And mm -hmm. like, that was another big step towards doing what I'm doing now. But like, truly, like, it was only through doing original stuff that was actually meaningful to me that led to all of the other work that now is my living because people like I think appreciated like they appreciated it but also like it was the first time that I think I was really shining through in what I was doing like my own yeah. interests and yeah it really worked out in that way that's really interesting so when you yeah. went to build a studio was that to create your own music were you going to offer that to other people it was to create my own music yeah I mean, initially, it was just to kind of build my basement studio to a place where I could, like, re do good quality recordings. Uh -huh. And then this past summer, we actually turned our garage into a proper recording studio just so that I will always have a place to work. Because in Toronto, like, everyone was getting kicked out of um, buildings because of, like, landlords who are, you know, just like, like, we, like my last studio that I was in before the one that we built... Mm -hmm. uh, got turned into a WeWork space and like studios that had been there since the early 90s and like all of these businesses, everyone got the boot. Uh oh, hold on. The paparazzi's here. So, what have you found anything that you're working on now? I guess I'm mostly asking about your personal music, but. Has that been inspired or impacted or your creative process been impacted by what we're going through right now and how you've been feeling? No, I mean, surprisingly not. Like, I I just finished an album, or a bunch uh -huh. of albums, actually. One with a few friends. And, like, what this whole thing kind of forced me to do was learn how to mix my own records. I was always uh -huh. too scared to do that. Yeah. So that was really good, you know, like, and I was able to kind of like hunker down at night and learn this new skill, which I found really rewarding. So like I mixed that and then a bunch of people reached out to do like to contribute a song to a compilation. So I feel like there's been all these kind of pushes for people trying to like support artists during all that. And in reaching out to me to help with, with, with that, I've, um, I've actually been more productive <laughs> over the last two months than I ever have been. But I think, while watching a kid. While watching a kid. But I'm tired, and I think I need to kind of dial it back a bit because if I don't, I'm going to just burn out in a pretty major way. Yeah. How are you feeling looking? I mean, what? I, I don't know. How are you feeling looking forward over the next few months? Do you feel hopeful? I mean, what do you think about this whole thing, I guess? Hopeful. You know, Ontario, where I live, just res like kind of opened up the possibility of having babysitters. So, uh -huh. I mean, we're going to totally take advantage of that. So uh -huh. it means that our days are going to get a lot more manageable. Uh -huh. And that was the first like, kind of sliver of hope that we've had since all of this started. And I think that there's a really good chance it's going to get rolled back, you know, as the government kind of tries things out, uh -huh. sees what the health impact is, then we'll have to maybe kind of tighten up again. But yeah. for the next two weeks, we are going to get a babysitter and help to help with childcare, and i'm fucking excited about that man it's like it feels unreal i bet i bet that's gonna be yeah. a relief is, um, is are you guys in the same boat like are, are they kind of relaxing uh restrictions or in my state i'm in illinois um they're they're one of the tightest states you know they've got a plan when certain numbers and thresholds are met that they're going to mm -hmm. start relaxing some things but our state has been pretty tamp down for a while now that's good um yeah i feel i feel i don't know it's i mean it's good that they're taking it seriously like we yeah you know i'm i'm terrified for what the next year is going to look like especially for you guys down there like i mean obviously like we follow your news like crazy <laughs> at least my wife and i do and most people yeah. i know and like i'm very scared for the united, for the united states i i really hope that people take this seriously uh me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but i'll leave it at that for right now um, so okay so i'm just looking over the notes because we kind of uh chatted a bit before this mm -hmm. and you know we talked about child care and just how you're doing you 
we've touched on some of them, but you had said there are positive things to talk about as well. Is there anything else that comes to mind that? I mean, I think the positive is just that the positive is like, I think that in all of this, I've seen my friends all sort of rally and try to find ways to stay connected, whether it be like, you know, there's a weirdo club in the city called the Transac that all of the kind of weirder music happened at. And then like people have been organizing events on Instagram live where like people will be doing like these concerts and the kind of bip from bip and bop from musicians and musicians who are all part of this community. And every Thursday night you have this series that kind of reconnects you with all of your friends and you get to watch each other play and like seeing the way people have sort of like tried to reinvent community has been really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also just, um, you know, I think, like I said, like I've been working like crazy and trying yeah. to make as much original music as I possibly can. And that has been really wonderful. Like, I'm kind of, I'm really proud of what's come out of the last two months. Like, I think this one record that I did with my friend Nicholas Kurgovich is one of the best things I've ever done. And I'm actually releasing a cover of a settee piece on Western Vinyl next week or two weeks from now like on the 26th. And I did it with a string player. And it's all sort of like weird tape manipulations. And and it's a cover of uh, that settee piece, Je ne peux dire number one. And that's also like, I think it's totally amazing. And it never would have happened if COVID never happened. So okay. I think that like the way people have been trying to support each other and like give each other creative projects to do and all of that during this has been really beautiful and I, that's that to me is the positive like I just wish I just wish I had a babysitter for the last two months yeah well sounds like relief is coming soon 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 for sure okay so on the 26th you have something coming out on western vinyl something new yeah and, and then on the on, in September, this full album is coming out that I made with my friend Nick Kurgovich and Chris Harris, and that's coming out on E Day Fix Records. And like that, I think is going to be just I love it. Like I really love that record, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for it too. Um, yeah. Is there where where can people you know support your music? Where should they go? Bandcamp, Spotify, Western Vinyl site if they want to buy vinyl wherever. Mm -hmm. Like, um. I am easy. If you can't afford it, just steal it and, uh, you know, get me back at a show sometime. All right. Anything you want to add? No, thank you so much for letting me talk and vent. You know, like, it really helps to even just say that, like, you feel frustrated. And that was really nice. Good. It was really nice to talk to you. Um, you too. Thank you for asking me to talk. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, nice to talk to you and enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Okay, I'm going to X you out. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, that was Joseph Chavison. And if you missed some of that, it's going to be up in the, I think, it, IGTV, and I'm going to put it up on YouTube um, pretty soon, within a day or two. Um, great interview about being a parent, being a musician, going through all of this, and uh, kind of how he's doing. So check it out. I'm going to finish up with a song. Um, usually I try out my new songs at open mics, but since I can't do that, I'm going to try it out here. This is one that I wrote very recently, and uh, it's called I Miss You, My Friend. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> Miss you, my friend, but it's not the end. Even if you want me to, a call from you that it's end. The summer will spring. Church bells ring, even if it's far away, they come someday at its end. And it's all right. I know it's been hard and it's wrong. Far you sit in the silence and 
songs called I Miss You My Friends um, and uh, I'm Jessica Risker you can check out my album uh, you can get it at Western Vinyl or go on Spotify if you want to listen to some more of my music if you want to check out past episodes of music therapy go on YouTube there's also a link in my bio um, tomorrow I've got Shelby Turner a good friend of mine also Richard Album going to come on and talk to us about how he's doing um, hope you guys are doing okay Try to get outside today, say hi to somebody, and we'll see you.